One of the best parts about Power World is how many systems there are to scale. Everything from breeding to condensing to the whole shebang. To basically make the ultimate pal and to achieve godlike status with your build. Now that I finally reached endgame, I'm happy to report you don't need to wait to endgame to become absurdly overpowered in this game. And basically make everything significantly easier, especially if you know how many pals have massive, massive leverage. How easy it is to thrive when you know what pal does something really really well or at the very least having that pal in your back pocket if shit ever hits the fan so without further ado ladies and gentlemen let's talk about everything that you're going to need to know about how to become op in power world first things first we will get into the tier list slash pals to get early on pals to get later on and pals to get at the very very later on um, as well, of course, we'll get to that, but we should definitely kind of cover our bases with how you essentially scale in this game. First and foremost, a quick overview of breeding. Breeding in this game is the key to the most amount of gain I think you can possibly attain. And it's pretty easy to do pretty early on. I think it's around level 9 or 12 when you get access to the breeding pen and you can just have at her. And breeding is kind of simple, especially with the mass introduction of the breeding calculator. This website is a godsend and essentially makes breeding really easy. It tells you all the variants of how to get the palace you want, the palace that we're going to talk about in a moment here. Uh, you just go in there, click that pal, it'll tell you all of the breeding things, you just throw a male and a female in there, and boom, you will get access to that pal. Fantastic. It's also really good for leveling up because you can get 10 out of 10 pals really easy this way. But the main power in breeding lies within traits. Things like Musclehead and Ferocious perfectly synergizing with one another being amazing. Or Swift and Runner giving you ungodly movement speed. I'm sure you guys have heard this to death. I'm trying to move on fast so <laughs> we don't drag too much here. But one thing I didn't mention in the breeding video was actually legendary traits. Now the reason why I didn't talk about this is because it's super endgame. And fun funnily enough, I was at 41 level uh, and oh my god am I still not close enough to really doing this only just have i gotten that because i did all the stuff in this video but the tldr is legendary traits are acquired from really end game pals think anything 45 plus uh, as far as bosses in the world space all of the end game traits seem to be something along the line of improve elemental damage here anyways to keep it short how you can get access to these amazing legendary traits uh, is by capturing these legendary pals and then breeding them down and often up um, or just finding a combination that can end you on the pal that you want. All right, let's do this a little better. So your gateway to power in power world is through the breeding tree, which you're mainly gaining through traits. Again, all you need is the pal combination that gets you the pal that we're gonna talk about here, and you'll be good to go. And you just let them cook long enough and you mix and mash them enough to where they inherit good traits. So if the mom has a good trait, the dad has a good trait, bang, you're cooking. The second thing that's really important is condensing your pal. Condensing your pal increases the proficiency or bonus of its skill. So if it's a lift monk, it's the lift monk skill when it's shooting its machine gun on your head. That's the thing that's buffing. But it also skills things like when you're mounting a pal, you do a ton of fire damage on all of your attacks. This can be exponentially good when you five out of five this. Lastly, is investing greater pal souls and lesser pal souls into, you guessed it, your pals. It's the Anubis statue. You go there, you dump all of the souls into one of your pals, and you can increase a variety of things. Most of the time, you're going to be increasing attack just to get a little bit more damage because you're going to need a lot of a lot of damage for endgame. But that's a TLDR of why these things are so important and how we're scaling things exponentially. Breeding, again, is straightforward. You just need to go get the pals, or you can literally breed them just by using the calculator and going all the way up. Then condensing is essentially getting a ton of one pal. You can do this by having an automated breeding farm, just outputting a ton of pals for fodder, or you going and capturing pals yourself. Uh, if you have enough Leaf Monk effigy uh, percentage chance increase to actually capture pals, it's not that bad. Otherwise, it's bad. <laughs> so, yeah. And lastly, how you get pal souls is essentially by just ca killing or capturing pals gives you pal souls and then you can actually butcher them to get even more and of course blue purple and gold souls all depend on the level and area where you're killing and harvesting said pal legendaries like anubis the boss fight of level 54 is one of the people who drops legendary souls so you're gonna need enough power to fight him in which we should get to the point where we talk about some op pals that can carry you let's finally move on to the pals that you're going to want to get as soon as you possibly can as early as you can because these are the best early game pals to get that will make you really really op some of them you've heard before so we'll try to make this quick let's talk about it first and foremost the absolute best pal i think you can get early on and it's honestly great even until at endgame lift monk is one of the best pals in the game i do put him above firefox by quite a lot um, because lift monk has pinpoint damage and infinite range and also he does not 
jeopardize your capture. Essentially, if you're using Fox Spark, he is like a massive AoE fire, fire hose, but he also applies a fire dot to enemies, often screwing you over when it comes to actually capturing the pal that you want. So, Firefox is great, but just not as good as Lift Monk. Um, and Lift Monk, I feel like, scales better because the amount of bullets you get for for the usage is just so much better. Also, you can use like gliding pals while you're using him. It's, it's just so good. And again, how you scale him up is basically just getting muscle head, ferocious, and any other kind of attack scaling traits. And then you can condense him as much as possible. And that will give you a ton of a ton of duration and I think more damage on his uh, pal skill activation, which is what you're going to want from him. And of course, you can also throw some souls in him and that will scale up his attack and make him deal even more damage. Um, but I honestly think you're better off just having two of them in your party when you're early on and just swapping back to back to them. That'd be great. Again, on rare mention, Fox Bart, just want to say he's great for AoE damage, but because of that, he also is weak in a sense. But Fox Bart, totally good to go for as well early on. But if I could suggest only two pals to get early on, it'd be Lift Monk and then a pal that I had no idea was this strong. Oh, his name. Uh, Tokata Ko? Uh, it's basically a dodo bird looking ass thing <laughs> yes the reason why he is so good is because when you eventually unlock his his saddle or whatever his pal skill he becomes an amazing aoe grenade launcher that just like kind of stops enemies from coming at you because he constantly keeps them staggered his aoe explosion tends to knock them on their ass and you can just keep juggling them or outright kill them this is a pal that i never got to use because i just didn't know he was this strong and you can use lift monk to facilitate you capturing him and just wreck this will make the beginning of the game a cakewalk for you, and oh my god, does he look like a fun character to play with. You just tap that ass, and then bang! Explosions galore. The last thing for early game, I just wanted to mention this because not a lot of people know how amazing a pal's skills can scale, but the quick TLDR, any pal that grazes, i.e. if you want more milk, if you want more honey for your, your little ranch, essentially condensing pals into themselves will essentially gain you a better yield of that said resource. So if you want more milk from a cow, you condense a bunch of cows into one cow, you now get four milk instead of one milk every consecutive interval, right? Cool. But there is one pal that goes beyond this, and it's of course Vixie. Vixie, a pal that everyone knows at this point, but essentially it gives you a lot of uh, spheres, which can be fantastic as well as a bunch of other things, but the main thing is spheres that we're after. But the thing that makes it amazing is if you actually bring Vixie to level four, she actually drops mega spheres. And mega spheres are something that you're probably always going to use as by far the best bang for your buck uh, sphere in the entire game. You'll even be crafting these at end game. Uh, especially when you unlock legendary uh, pal balls, you'll probably oscillate between having legendary pal balls, which are amazing for capturing really, really end game pals, and the most efficient costing pal ball, which of course is mega spheres. So super good to do this early on, especially considering this is how you're going to level up and kind of get to mid to end game even faster than you were just by using one Vixie. Get it to four condensed levels. Holy shit. Also Takatoa, uh, basically, yes, it's the same formula with damn near anything. Uh, try to get as much uh, damage traits on it as possible and then just cook, essentially. Get, put some souls in there if you want even more damage, uh, condense them if you want even longer duration and damage, fantastic, and yeah. On to the mid-game pals, which is kind of like mid to end game pals. This is when you get to around level 20 to 45, uh, which is right on the cusp of end game, and frankly, some of these can be end game. In fact, you probably won't switch off a lot of them because there's only really two end game pals, at least that I want to talk about because no one knows about how good they are or very little people have talked about how good they are. Specifically one of them. One per you know one of them, but not the second one. Anyway, the first mid to late game pal that you're going to want, he is someone I don't hear enough people talk about because he just, he's just the best bang for your buck answer that exists in this game, especially when you're early on, especially for your first traversal mount, the mount that's actually gonna get you to go to get the tree fruit and everything else, especially dungeons and the whole shebang, is Ragnarok. I will always pronounce things incorrectly. If you hate me, I get it. Just yell at me, it's fine. I apologize, it'll be the way forever. Bad reinforcing that. Anyways, the reason why Ragnarok is so good is because he is small enough to get through the dungeons. This can actually just have you putt right to the end, not wasting a single drop of time, and it's so, so efficient. Especially if you stack Swift and Runner on him, oh my god, does he cook so fast. But not only that, Ragnarok is one of the special pals in the game uh, that is basically, when you are mounting said pal, converts your damage to their element and then gives you a damage bonus of 100% or 60% or 120% or something like that. Uh, Ragnarok is a part of this family doing specifically fire amplification damage, which is so, so good. So if you happen to have a crossbow or a pistol or an assault rifle, if you're that lucky, then you can get on this flying mount and shoot death from above and just wreck. 
Uh, this is something that actually can make you feel like, oh, I am actually dealing damage for once, and it's not just my pal. But it is, because you have to ride him in order to get access to damage. It's weird. Anyways, and you can get that bonus when you condense him. That will increase the amount of bonus damage you're getting. I'm not sure about this, but I believe it also increases your stamina and movement speed. So the duration in which you can fly, and I don't know if it increases the movement speed of which you can fly, but I think it increases the stamina that you have for your, your pal, essentially. Uh, which is also nice. So you're gaining damage and also you're gaining distance. Uh, but lastly, this is just kind of the third thing that for me, it was a big deal. Uh, I always like having pals that act as like Swiss army knives. So if I'm cooking something, I can throw down my pal and he'll start cooking that food for me. Um, Ragnarok has a two in fire kindling and like cooking essentially. So he actually has a use case. I know there's other mounts, but this is one of the ones that you can get early on and also provides that benefit of cooking. And also he's just one of the best for like breeding. Cause if you have a ton of this pal in your base, moving things all around your base, just an overall amazing pal again leveling up is the same bog standard thing you would do except because he's a flying mount uh, you can actually choose between whether you want to make him damage oriented or movement oriented i.e focus on things like ferocious muscle head which would give him a lot of damage or you can focus on swift and runner or if you want him to have both be efficient in both attributes legend is the only thing that can give you a little bit more movement speed and you have to defeat like the hardest bosses of the game to get that so not worth it yet for me to do that <laughs> but yes that's something you could do if you wanted to fully send him the next pal that is absolutely amazing at endgame which i think a lot of people love to bits i definitely do is fangle hop dear goaded goat pal looking absolutely sick as hell love the look of this pal this pal has one of the most insane movement abilities in the entire game i don't think he's matched in any of it as far as his movement and jump capacity he can leap twice and absurdly far um, and he is ridiculously fast. And on top of all that, scales really, really well as far as building him for attack. So you can actually give him an amazing PAL skill ability activation, essentially, where he can huck like an ice meteorite that does a shit ton of damage just on a base. He's a super, super good PAL. Not only that, but this one I am for sure of, if you condense, because this PAL is basically his partner skill is strictly movement oriented. He is double jump and you can mount him. So when you condense more of Fangle Hops into one another, you will get more speed and stamina, basically distance and speed. Fantastic. So he just becomes a better movement mount. This one I have definitely made uh, do both essentially. I have given him traits that basically make him amazing at movement and also amazing at dealing damage. I've also given him a ton of action skills, which is fantastic. And I also increased his base attack with the soul method that we talked about, the statue. Again, just scaling up all those metrics. It's gonna be the kind of a similar thing for whatever you want. Hopefully at this point you're starting to get how you scale up damage is by stacking those variables. There are like minutia, which we'll get into at the very end, about like legendary traits and things like that, but yeah. And if I had to pick one pal to have out of this entire lot, it has to be this pal, Gale Claw. Gale Claw is the absolute biggest game changer in this game as far as enjoyment and survivability. You go from barely being able to take a hit to never getting hit ever because Gale Claw is essentially a high speed glider slash position adjustment. He is fantastic. You just jump in the air once, you jump, hit the jump button again, and now you're gliding and descending so slowly and can move so quickly and reorient yourself on a battlefield. So if you're dealing with some weird pal AOE boss nonsense, you can get out of there immediately. So traits don't really work. But what can increase your overall speed and distance is condensing him. So the only kind of point of leverage that you for sure have with Gale Claw is condensing a ton of birds into one bird. But again, one of the reasons why I picked Gale Claw out of this whole lot as my one pick is because you only really need one Gale Claw and he delivers onto you so much. You don't have to condense or work for him too much for him to give everything back to you. Now I'm sure you're thinking, hey Grin, if he can't be improved when it comes to giving him movement speed buffs for his traits, what if instead I give him things like Stronghold and Fortress, things that make it so that my player attack when he is out does more. My attack goes up when he's on the field. The reason why that doesn't exactly work is because you don't really want him to be on field for a long time. Like we're gonna talk about, you can really scale up on field pals to just dump out a really high damage skills and nuke things. So then the next train of thought was my train of thought, which is, okay, well, what if I then I just scaled up Gale Claw to basically have all of the damage with Ferocious, Muscle Head, and then the Saddest, and I think it's Aggressive is what the other one was. Anyways, point is, scale up his damage exponentially, throw a bunch of high damage, high cooldown skills on him, chuck them down, have him basically be a grenade, a giant nuke, I just spawn him out, he dumps all of his skills out, and then I just throw out my actual damage dealer, but hey, I just got a massive surge of damage, awesome, right? This kind of falls apart, and we'll talk about this mainly with the next pal. Let's get into it.
One of the most interesting pals in the game is Garat, or Gorilla, basically. Gorilla Pokemon, Mr. Man Pal, people hate when I say Pokemon, sorry. Uh, pal, Pal, Pal Pokemon, Gorilla Guy, King Kong. The reason why this pal is noteworthy is he's one of the few pals that has an absolutely busted uh, pal skill with absurd scaling. This pal's special ability is when you activate this special ability, it puts your Gorilla friend in a furious state, increasing his damage by anywhere from, I think it's like 60 to 200% at max condensed level or pal skill level it makes him do an absurd amount of damage so then you can think in your head oh dude this is gonna be sick most of the like scaling things in this game are like 100 bonus damage and that's with like flying mounts and you just basically inherit their damage and the player damage can't do as much damage as pals anyway so it's kind of like a neat thing but not a great thing it can be crazy if you scale it but anyway. so in your head you're probably like okay grin let me tell you we're gonna basically throw muscle head ferocious and any other attack scaling we can if we have ledge we'll chuck it on there boom we'll do that then we're gonna give him all of the highest damage uh, skills activations that we can fantastic uh it doesn't matter that he has a long cooldown because we only have a small duration to activate uh ferocious anyway so we want to get as much damage out of that activation as possible let's give him all of these like a nuke level abilities right grin fantastic oh yeah I, I feel you man what if we also invested an absolute boatload of uh, souls into him increasing his attack almost to the maximum point wouldn't that be even crazier all right let's see it in action okay so you're confused that was great, wasn't it? That was actually a really cool amount of damage. Good kill, solid kill. He's just swinging and just dropping shit, right? Great. He, here's the issue. Here's what you didn't see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. By the way, I didn't, I didn't mention this. Here's what Gale Claw did as well. Yeah, I'm, I may be one of the most impatient people on the whole planet. I apologize. This was agonizing to me. I put so much work into this gorilla guy. And it just, it makes everything so clear for how terrible your pal's activations are. I, they had a patch a while back that said they improved the pal's like aggressive state. Absolutely not. I feel like it got much worse even. Uh, I found that like the pals in the world space, they attack you with a great deal of like ravaging hatred. Like they just keep pushing on and they keep activating abilities. Even when I was trying to farm uh, the gorillas, holy shit, they just keep swinging at you constantly. I thought this is going to be awesome. I can't wait to have one of these things on my team only for me to activate him throw him out and then for him to just spend most of the time mad dogging the fucking boss it's so frustrating and i know he wasn't on cooldown by the way i, I slowed down to get these these clips so that i could see that he wasn't on cooldown um for these high high abilities for these high damage abilities and boy oh boy it was just like a big gut punch but here's the thing if they improve the ai for your pals making it so that when i say please be aggressive meaning do not spend 20 minutes looking at the enemy and doing backflips and doing all this dodging shit i just want you to attack i just want you to attack and attack and attack and not worry about getting hit i just want you to be a monster for frothing at the mouth i even activate a rage you think that would just improve the aggression no none of that happened so Eventually, if they do improve the pal's aggression, this would be a good strat. You throw him out, your gorilla's gonna just drop some nukes, then you pull him back and you use whatever. You use a lift monk, maybe use a mounted pal. And honestly, this is one of the main reasons why the last two pals we're gonna talk about, as well as Fanglehop and Ragnarok are so damn good, is basically any mounted pal will massively outperform any other pal with exceptions of maybe like lift monk who can be automated anything that you can actually have like keep on your time and effect is amazing but you solely depending on the ai to do their job is extremely frustrating and they very rarely do it this is why mounted damage is always amazing We'll talk about it in a minute of uh, how crazy that can be, even though I'm sure you already know some of the minutiae about how crazy you mountain pals are. But anyways, thank you so much for letting me rant about that. That was like four days in the making and just I needed to be like, this is a bot, what the heck? What the happening? The Portuguese coming on anyways ah. but ladies and gentlemen last but not least these are the end game pals that I most uh, dearly love yes there are pals by the way as like jet dragon but those ones to me are like it's great but they're like made to be an amazing flying and traversal mount sure you could apply all the same things we're talking about of like finding the right uh, traits to scale them up and condensing them a bunch so on and so forth they could become great not saying they can't 
but these ones I feel like are pretty good bang for your buck as far as acquiring them and then doing something absurdly special and answering, sorry, them having a good answer to the problems that we encounter at Endgame. The first and the most impressive pal that I was not suspecting that would be so good is actually Thikachu, aka Grizzbolt. Grizzbolt is unreasonably amazing, especially when it comes to Endgame because he is so good as far as his utility goes. Let me describe one of the best like ways to deal damage in this game in general. Again, like I mentioned, mounted pals are so, so damn good. The reason why is because you can activate all of their pal skills just dumping damage. And what's absurd is you can actually jump off of your mounted pal and they will immediately use their skills again despite the cooldown. The reason why this is is because there's two separate cooldowns. One for you when you're mounted and then one for your pal when they're active. So you can put a bunch of high damage skills on your pal. Um, you use them when they're mounted and then you jump off and they use them. But then there's this kind of like middle ground waiting period, which is really terrible. But what's less terrible is when you have a pal like Grizzbolt, which his main pal skill is can be mounted and also you can use his chain gun. This is the perfect synergy of this problem being solved. You essentially jump on Grizzbolt, use the skill abilities, jump off Grizzbolt, make sure he's on aggression so he just spams out his abilities as fast as humanly possible, great. As soon as you see all of the abilities are detonated, great. Then you jump on Grizzbolt, and then you can start using the machine gun in the downtime. This is so, so good. Also, one of the things that's amazing is Grizzbolt, um, his machine gun does just the right amount of damage, meaning not the most crazy damage numbers you've ever seen. The reason why this is good is because at endgame, you don't always want to deal a shit ton of damage. A lot of times you're trying to capture a pal, so you don't want to drop these massive nukes on him. So, the machine gun is so, so good for actually when you go back to like capture a bunch of pals to condense them to improve your base, to improve your damage, to whatever. So he is the best thing to kind of reach and grab. By the way, hopefully while I'm rambling, I've been showing you guys where these pals are located. That's kind of like been the rhythm in the background. So if I don't need to specifically call it out and be like, nah, go here and get this pal here. I will say though, these last two pals that we're gonna talk about are very hard to find. You have to sit there and like save, quit, save, quit, save, quit to find them. I was under the assumption that you just go to this island, boom, they'd be there. No, <laughs> they have a chance of spawning there and it's rough. Anyways, but again, Grizzbolt's machine gun is so good because not only does it give you something to do in the downtime, but if you really, really scale Grizzbolt, that machine gun can actually just tear through and shred enemies beautifully. And it's also pretty controlled, so you can like tap the trigger and just do little tiny hits, and then eventually uh, you'll whittle down the, the person's health, and then you'll be able to capture them with greater ease. It's so, so good. Not only that, but again, he doesn't have very good movement speed um, at all, so you can just fully send his damage. You're basically, Grizzbolt is essentially a tank, a walking tank that you can drop and just spam abilities and just wreck and ravage. Um, and again, if you had like, if you had like three maxed out Grizzbolts with a ton of different types of skills on them, holy shit, would you just be an absolute endless fortress of damage. It's, he's so good and I don't think he gets enough love and Again, just for the utility factor and the like, the, the rotation of activate abilities, jump off him, let him activate his abilities. Awesome, jump back on him. Light stuff up with the machine gun and then rinse and repeat uh, when eventually you have access to his skills again. Use his skills, jump off him, let him use his skills, jump back on him, use the machine gun a little bit. And if you have him condensed, that machine gun should last quite a long time and so on and so forth. It's just damn, damn good, ladies and gentlemen. Anyways, Grizzbolt being a fucking king, a thick king, <laughs> Okay, aside, let's talk about Shadowbeak. A lot of people know Shadowbeak is one of the most stylish birds in the entire game, looking so goddamn good, probably the coolest looking pal in the game, I think. Grizzbolt looks pretty cool too. The reason why Shadowbeak is on this list is one of the best endgame pals outside of like, you know, things, again, there's like there's like the unicorn of, of damage, there's like the horse minotaur thing. Sure, these things are like meant to be the most cracked thing on the planet, but these these pals stand with them without having their abs absurd scaling and attack scaling, right? The reason why Shadowbeak is so good, if I could define it, is because he has one skill that is absolutely devastating. In fact, it's called Divine Disaster. This is one of the most absurd pal skills you will ever see. And I think all Shadowbeaks have it, so long as you level them enough to have the chance to unlock it. Essentially, he basically drops a bunch of little orbs, and then those like six or seven orbs all shoot out like a f like 18 shots of light, essentially, or dark damage. Uh, it is so powerful. Um, it is so good. And guess what? He's a mounted pal. So you can jump on, activate these three skills like we're talking about, then jump off, and then he'll activate it again, creating like a barrage or a flurry, which is absurd. 
Then you can jump on him, activate whatever skills you have left. Ideally, you probably should have dumped all of his skills and then jumped off and then he'd use all of his skills again. And then you jump on him and then you may be thinking, oh, Grim, but now we're shit out of luck. We're up shit creek without a paddle. What do we do? We just kind of float around, maybe we fly. No, my friend, the reason why is because when you condense Shadowbeak onto himself, his pal skill is that he actually converts your player damage into dark magic damage. So if you have a semi-competent damage build, you can actually start to shoot the enemy and deal a substantial amount of damage. Um, especially if you have like attack necklaces on, you don't even need to have crazy attack necklaces on, but you have something, it's gonna do a, a really, really good amount. So there's something you can do in the, in the downtime. Or you could just have another Shadow Beak with uh, Musclehead Ferocious uh, Legend and, of course, the Scaling uh, Damage trait. Uh, and that would also be a good, good thing to do in the background. You just have two of the spam bots that you could have. Um, and long, honestly, ladies and gentlemen, this should kind of take care of you. You have a flying mount that's absolutely godly. You could have one with a ton of movement speeds on it on the topic of the thing I just mentioned. The best combinations for most of these pals are actually very, very similar. I want to put something on the screen right now. The best combination for damage pals tends to be Muscle Head, which gives you 30% damage. Fantastic. And then the second one is Ferocious. Ferocious gives you 20% more damage. Again, fantastic. But then things kind of slightly change. The second best, like the absolute cream of the cream, best of the best, is something called Legendary. This is a trait that can spawn from these five I think it's five uh, pals on the map, but I warn you, my friends, they are juiced. Like they're so goddamn hard. They have so much health. Uh, they will one tap you. You need to be at end game. You need to be level 50 and you need to have armor. You have to have leveled up. You have to have a, a good uh, pals, all that stuff. You have to ha you, ha you have to be leveled up and hopefully you've dumped a decent amount into, of course, HP so you can endure a little bit, so on and so forth. This is, this is no joke. Uh, I've very rarely seen someone under level take these guys on with any degree of success. It's a wee bit rough. And if you're like me, who's been playing quite a long time and you wanted to kind of get to end game a little bit faster, you can actually go into your world settings and just scale up the XP gain that you attain you can't really cheap out on anything you still have to do stuff in the world like you kill bosses capture pals uh, 10 out of 10 pals and stuff like that but it can exponentially decrease your waiting time to get to level 50 to get to the end game i got to like level 45 and i just thought i now want to get to the end game <laughs> i want to get to the end game please i don't want to start breeding like the ultimate pal so i i, I, I increased the xp gain quite a bit <laughs> but you could do that if you wanted just to kind of kind of get to the end game faster but i digress back to what we're saying legend so again, Musclehead, Ferocious, Legend. Legend gives you a more attack scaling as well as movement speed and defense. I think, it's, I think it's around 15 attack. I may be wrong, but it's on the screen right now, so you guys can just see that. But then the question becomes, okay, well, what's the last scaling thing that we can add, Grin? Well, the last scaling thing is basically any sort of elemental damage scaling that you want. So Anubis has Earth. So uh, let's not use Anubis. This pal on screen right now has a chance to drop with a legendary uh, skill or trait essentially, which is going to improve dark damage by 20%, which is pretty good. And if I throw that on Shadowbeak, who does dominantly dark damage, and also we are doing dark damage when we're mounting him, which is great, that's going to exponentially scale up our overall end game damage. Same thing I think could be said for Grizzbolt. Uh, if you just basically put an elemental scaling damage thing on him, that would be fantastic, and you'd be able to thrive with that. So that's, so that's great. That is clearly the cream of the cream, best of the best build. This is going to take you a lot. Specifically, this and this will take you a good bit to get to. You're going to need a lot. Either you're going to need a lot of lift monks that can slowly chip away, you're going to need to grind up to level 50, all of these things. A really, really good second place that I almost, like, it's, 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 you, there's a lot of money in second place, gang. I would suggest this one. If you just keep Musclehead and Ferocious and change these last two to, I think it's Agitated or Aggressive or something like that, and then a Saddest, both of those increase your damage by 15%. So, no, with Legend, you're getting a bunch more bang for your buck with defense and, of course, uh, movement speed. But you're still getting the 15% damage bonus, which is often what you're there for anyway. Uh, and then we're skipping out on the elemental damage bonus, but it's only 20% of an elemental damage bonus rather than the 15 increase to attack. Now, granted, maybe I don't know something about the code. I would love for you guys who are always brilliant and extremely helpful in the community. Does elemental damage scale so much more? Because if it doesn't, and attack scales almost the same, why would you go through the headache of getting the elemental damage scaling and also shoehorn yourself into only using those elemental skills? Because a lot of time, we mentioned last time, 
Ice can be really powerful. There's a really good fire skill that's also like a nuke and so on and so forth. And you also kind of want to have that because you never know what kind of pal you're gonna go up against. Like some pals are really resistant to let's say dark damage. Uh, so you don't want to have just one damage type. So it kind of helps to be kind of all purpose with attack, right? But that all may be bullshit if the elemental scaling is absurd as far as how much that thing scales. Maybe it scales way more than attack, who knows? But that's a question for the community. That's something I couldn't really parse out and understand. But I still think, even regardless, I think it's still, if you're like pinch for time, just go with these like common abilities that still give you 15% each of damage. And uh, also, I haven't needed more than like Swift and Runner. They take care of you, buddy. They get you. They get you going fast. But ladies and gentlemen, those are the two pals that I think are absolutely cracked out of their mind. I am currently in the process of building my damn Grizzbolt. So forgive me if I didn't have the best gameplay. Uh, I probably grabbed some from the fantastic community amongst us um, of power world creators. Um, but yes, that is kind of the end state of absurdity <laughs> that can exist within the game. Um, and those are the things I think are worth building towards that actually will help you just continually nuke uh, the final boss like Sh Jet Dragon and so on and so forth. The equation is almost all, all the same. Uh, condense a lot of pals into the pal that has damage scaling uh, or something valuable that we've mentioned here. Uh, and then the second thing would be to get a lot of good traits on your pal. And the third thing would just be to scale up their attack with the statue, uh, kind of like soul statue in your base to buff up their attack even more. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, you'll probably be able to handle any of the things in the game and have the boon of the jet dragon and the, the uh, dark pegasus and all of these things that are also really, really good. Uh, but ladies and gentlemen, that's essentially how you become OP in Power World. Hopefully I didn't ramble. I just tried to cover all my bases for people who are at many stages of the game who might be seeing this video and watching. I love you bits. Thank you kindly for your time. Also, not too many people are subscribed, but that's absolutely fine because we have lovely jubbly members who are incredibly generous and sweet. Uh, and also people who like the video, I appreciate you kindly. Thank you kindly for your time and goodbye, my friends.